So-called hate crime legislation is on the move with the support of President Obama. But according to Cato Institute senior fellow Nat Hentoff, laws that punish one time for the crime and one time for the hate violate the First Amendment, the 14th Amendment, and protections against double jeopardy. Hentoff spoke at the Cato Institute's Policy Perspectives 2009 in New York City. Now what hate crimes legislation do, if someone is physically violated, break, someone breaks the law, attacks that person, the person who is caught will get maybe, depending on the local jurisdiction, five or ten years, although this is now a federal statute. But anyway, for that, five or ten years, but if you do it and you attack someone of one of the protected classes, by gender, transgender, by race, disability, the whole list of protected classes, if you violate the bodily integrity of any of those people and the sentence is five to ten, you may get an extra five. Now that seems to me to violate, among other things, the 14th Amendment, equal protection of the laws, and as for the First Amendment, uh, James Madison once said, wrote, wrote a letter to Thomas Jefferson after a bill was passed, essentially what became the First Amendment, which he wrote the draft of, he said, I'm flattered to say that in this country now we will not be penalized for our thoughts. Hate crimes legislation are thought crimes. I've covered this now for at least 12 or 15 years. I've talked to, in the terms of the 45 state laws we've had, we have, I've talked to a number of assistant DAs and DAs arresting officers, what seems to them to be a hate crime is rather subjective. And now that it's before the Congress again, not at all to my surprise, the president yesterday, I haven't seen it yet, has come out with a strong endorsement of this hate crimes legislation. Now, it will pass the Senate and now we know it will be signed by the president. And one of the things that really troubles me is that the American Civil Liberties Union, and I have great respect for the people in the trenches, I write about them a lot, who have done a lot to, through Freedom of Information Act to reveal what's been going on in terms of various violations of our laws and treaties. The American Civil Liberties Union supports hate crimes legislation. And even more troubling, back in the 1970s, I think, there was a case out of Wisconsin, a hate crimes case. It was unanimously approved by the Supreme Court. And the opinion was written by Judge Rehnquist, Justice Rehnquist. Now, I'm not a big fan of some of the majorities of this Supreme Court, but I have some hope that the First Amendment will triumph over these hate crimes laws. Oh, one other thing, this has been part of previous hate crimes federal laws. If it turns out that they are state crimes that are being prosecuted, and it is determined by whom, maybe the FBI, maybe somebody else in Washington, that the state courts didn't do their job. They acquitted some of these people of hate crimes legislation. This hate crimes legislation that just passed means, well, will be tried, they'll be tried again in federal court. Now, I would think that the former professor of constitutional law at the University of Chicago, he must have heard somewhere about double jeopardy. So that's another uh, aspect of this really dreadful legislation. And the press is so uninterested, I was looking for it in the Times this morning, there was a tiny paragraph way inside the A section. I looked at the Washington Post on the web, I haven't seen it yet. And this is really dangerous stuff. If people can get more time in prison for what somebody said they said, that might be taken as evidence that what that law that was broken was a hate crimes. 
And there's a book by Professor James Jacobs, which is still in print on hate crimes. And he tells, and I found others as well, in state crimes prosecutions, there have been a number of cases when the prosecution brings to the trial of someone allegedly have committed a hate crime, somebody who heard him in a bar about four or five years ago saying certain things about certain protected classes, or somebody who talks about the magazines or newspapers that person has read. So again, we are now on the edge again of having a thought crimes bill turned into law, which will now go to the Supreme Court, I hope, and if I can say this, and I pray that the First Amendment will be restored. Nat Hentoff is a senior fellow at the Cato Institute. You can read more of his work at Cato.org.